Hey everybody, so to the new viewers, welcome, thank you so much for checking out my channel, and I hope that you will all become returning viewers. Now to the actual returning viewers, welcome back, and thank you so much for your continued support. Now that we have the formalities out of the way, on to the review! This video will be my second review of a Marvel Cinematic Universe film, and I think that it's very appropriate that I'm wearing this shirt, and I actually don't... I don't pick out shirts just to wear them for a review, I mainly just pick them out randomly, so I think it's destiny that I got this one. I will be doing a, a series of three videos, and I will be talking about one of my favorite trilogies of all time. I am of course talking about the Captain America trilogy, and today's review is on the film that started it all. Now let's jump back a little over 70 years ago, back to World War II, because this film is set in World War II, and it tells the story of Steve Rogers, a sickly man from uh, Brooklyn who is transformed into a super soldier known as Captain America, and he must stop the, uh, the evil Red Skull, who intends to use an artifact called a Tesseract as a, as a sort of a energy source for world domination. So Captain Steve Rogers in this film is played by Chris Evans, who previously portrayed uh, Johnny Storm in Fox's uh, Fantastic Four duology. You know, the ones that were, like, mediocrely decent compared to Fan Four Stick that came out, like, last year or whenever. I don't even remember when it came out. But honestly, it's good that he switched over to a uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe film because the Fantastic Four films, even though they were better than Fan Four Stick, were just horrible. But... Evans was really good as Captain America. Hell, he he is Captain America in this film. He was the strong man that we expected, but Evans brought humanity to the character and showed an equally vulnerable uh, character. The only problem that I have with um, with Captain America is that when he's a uh, sickling, uh, when he's a sickly person, uh, small and weak, he at times the neck or the neck on the on the small body looked completely CGI, and it made it obvious that his body was CGI in the end, and it was a little jarring, but luckily it was in very inconsistent. So Hugo Weaving in this film plays the antagonist Red Skull, and I fucking love Weaving so much. That man is a treasure. The track record that this man has with roles like, um, like Lord Elrond in Lord of the Rings, Agent Smith in The Matrix, and of course V from uh, V for Vendetta. The man proves once again that he can portray characters and make them more memorable for generations to come. His portrayal of Red Skull is no exception, and he was a great foil to Rogers. He was, in my opinion, he's one of the only villains in this, uh, in this cinematic universe who is actually a good villain, and he was able to work through the, pr the prosthetics in his mask. I know that, um, if I remember correctly, he didn't like wearing the mask. But either way, he was still able to project his uh, his acting style through the mask. Every facial tick that he made, he was able to express through that mask, and he looks amazing. Whenever he's in a scene, he completely steals the show for me. Sure, Evans gave him a run, a bit of a run for his money, but not much, which just shows how great he continues to be. Tommy Lee Jones plays Colonel Phillips, the head of the Strategic Scientific Reserve, the program that Rogers falls under. I find it, uh, just to um, branch off a bit, I find it odd that if you really look at the name, it says SSR, and that reminds me of the Nazis. I do find that a little hilarious and kind of stupid, but that's beside the point. Tommy, uh, Colonel Phillips is the cliche high-ranking officer who's who's constantly skeptical and gruff. As much as I love Tommy Lee Jones in this film, let's be honest, Tommy Lee Jones was playing Tommy Lee Jones. It was a mixture of that and fugitive Tommy Lee Jones. You know, that movie that he did with uh, Harrison Ford? He's just standing in one place pointing to somebody and saying that they need to do something in a southern accent. It's just that. Haley Atwell in this film plays... Uh, scratch it. Haley Atwell in this film plays Agent Peggy Carter. She's a British intelligence, a British intelligence officer, part of the Strategic Scientific Reserve, and she's she's a bit of a romantic uh, interest to Rogers. Atwell was amazing in this role. She was 
She was the woman who never becomes a damsel in distress, and yet she's tough, and she's tough in her own way. But Adwell was able to show off her sensitivities, especially when um, when she starts to believe that Rogers is just like any other guy that she's ever met. This film is a period piece, like Hacksaw Ridge, which was one of my favorite uh, films of last year. It looks like it was uh, it looks like it was shot in the the early to mid '60s, but had a way bigger budget. And it also had a sort of Raiders of the Lost Ark feel, which made me feel a bit nostalgic. And it also helped that the director, Joe Johnston, actually worked on Raiders of the Lost Ark. And he was also, um, he was the art director and effects and effects artist on the film. He also uh, directed other period pieces such as 2010's The Wolfman and The Rocketeer. The Wolfman not really being a good, uh, not really being a good film but looking aesthetically beautiful for a period piece. And then The Rocketeer, I don't remember too much about the film, but I do remember it being beautiful to me. One thing that really worried me about this film, um, the first time I watched it, was wondering how how they were going to get past the cheesiness of a real soldier dressing up like, well, like he does, and going off into battle carrying a shield in the 20th, 20th century and calling himself Captain America. It's cheesy as fuck, but I'm not going to go into into detail just in case you haven't seen the film, but I will say that I am actually really happy with how they chose to do it, and it was quite believable. As a small side note, Alan Silvestri did a fantastic job on the score, especially with Captain America's main theme. It... I honestly think it may be my second favorite score of his. My favorite, of course, being um, what he did with the first Avengers film. The movie also wasn't overly patriotic. I I always feel that that there's a risk with war films, with patriotism being way too in your face, but luckily that's not the case in the film. They were able to hold back on certain points, and that actually made me really happy. As far as negatives, it's it is kind of hokey and corny at times, but honestly, I wonder if they did that on purpose, knowing that certain things would be uh, seen as a little bit cheesy, which honestly, if they did, then I actually, uh, I won't count that as a negative, but since I don't know that, I do have to count that as a negative. And, um, the pacing does hurt the film slightly in certain parts. I feel like maybe there should have been more action in certain scenes, and honestly, um, I preferred the, the first act over the second act because, like, the second act is exactly what I wanted. I wanted, like, kind of world building and, and just you know, character development. And I got that. I got exactly what I wanted. And then, of course, in the in the second half, you're you're wanting more action, but it's not really it's not really done correctly. I think that they um, I think that the movie suffered because it was just a bunch of um, montages that don't really hit you. You just know that they're going in, killing people, and blowing up um, research uh, buildings. That's it. It's just back forth, back forth. I wanted actual, I just wanted full scenes where they were just doing one thing, something that lasted maybe five minutes. That would actually make me very happy. Before I finish up and start my recap, I do have to point out one thing that I love about this film and the MCU. One thing that stands out about these films is that each individual uh, standalone film uh, recently has been somewhat of a different genre within itself. Um, prime examples would be that Ant-Man was a heist film and Guardians of the Galaxy was a space opera. The Captain America films, uh, specifically this one, actually started the tradition. This one, um, this one's made to feel like it's just simply a war film. If you took out, um, okay, for example, like, I always talk about, uh, superhero movies that if you took away the whole comic book and superhero element, it'll still have a great story. This is one of them. This one, if you took away Captain America, it would just be a simple, it would be a, a World War II film, a war film, and I love that. Of course, I also, uh, I will talk about um, the genres of the other two films and their respective reviews. I didn't want to say anything in this one, just in case you haven't seen the other two. To recap, Captain America, the first Avenger, is an awesome addition 
to the MCU, and it was it was a great origin story for this pop culture icon. It had uh, fantastic performances all around. It was a beautifully shot film. It had it had an actually great plot, and it's just it has a great retro feel that's that's sure to please anybody who's like me, anybody who loves period pieces. Thank you guys so much for watching me and well, listening to me ramble on and on. I must ask though, what did you guys think of the film? Did you love it? Hate it? Haven't seen it? Indifferent? All of the above? Etc. Etc. Whatever your answer is, I want to know. I, I welcome new perspectives. Also, if you haven't already, please, please subscribe to my channel for more reviews and content. There's always more to come. Also, be on the lookout for my next couple of reviews including the next Captain America film, The Winter Soldier. May the Force be with you, and I'll see you guys next time.